set the parking brake just in case. the channel welcome back to the garage so tonight is part two of our data logging talk so the last couple days well let me rewind in the last video at the end i was kind of frustrated and all that while well, i was trying to wire all the sensors get everything ran and it was just kind of turning into a whole big shit ball i wasn't taking my time and really thinking about how to route everything uh nicely i was pretty much bringing all the wires up through the hole in the floor here which our access panel we're gonna have to make for you know our transmission bolts and really that wasn't the right way to do it i just was trying to do something real quick i was like ah we'll put a little cut out well i didn't like that so i decided to just stop and the last couple days it's pretty much all i've been doing is wiring i have our anteater mounted back up to where we had it all the extra cable just kind of spooled up there on the floor in case we want to move it later this is all pretty well sealed up um firepunk does a real nice job with the harness but i didn't want to cut in anything also have our blow off valve controller there with it just the wire running up here as you can see i have the switches in for the engine cooling fan the transmission cooling fan and the selectable hood stack I still need to run a power wire for the trans fan and selectable hood stack. The engine act engine cooling fan actually needs to see a ground, so that's already hooked up and ready to go. Uh, I guess the key should be on to do that. Well, anyway, so trust me, it does work. Also, I have our CTS-2 mounted up. Um, I had a pillar pod already. Uh, round for the truck so i just use that i actually do like this pillar mount they give you it is a little tight down here on the bottom but if you had like a triple stack and put it up here um it'd be fine but they have a piece of plastic there so that way it hides your wires nice this one's removable this is our data cable which we'll get into in a little bit so i also have all of the sensors wired the transmission pan the converter well i might as well just show you there's the sensor for the fluid coming out of the converter there. It goes up into a harness and then up that way. Here is the pan temperature sensor which runs along here and ties into that other one. And here's our line pressure sensor with its connector. Um, that one I actually had to wire up. It wasn't you know, already made up by edge, which is no big deal. A power, a ground, and then the sensor wire. Our EGT gauge is down there on the bottom of the manifold since we have it, our manifold flipped up. And I still have to run the other connector wires for the hood stack and the rear exhaust. Fuel pressure sensor down there. Our boost pressure sensor there. Those wires are ran to the back here and meet up with the transmission wires. They actually go up through the hole for the push rod, which I installed a grommet in. Um, I still think we can get a push rod through there if we had to, but those will come out easy enough. Just undo the sensors and pull the wires through. And the EGT probe and eventually our drive pressure gauge, which we need our copper coil, which is on its way. We need that. Um, I just I purchased one rather than doing it myself because I knew if I did it myself, it would probably end up all kinked up and looking like shit. So I just purchased one of those. So I haven't ran those wires yet because of that, but that goes up in here and meets up with the wires for the line pressure gauge. And then I have all the harnesses kind of bundled up here in case we ever need to move or anything. Cause for the time being, that's gonna be covered by the cow. So I didn't think that was a big deal. In the cab here, we have all our EAS connectors. They just come through this hole, which I think was through the old heater box and defroster and all. But as you can see, I labeled everything so that way it make it easier when I was setting everything up. So we have our EGT, our, um, each, each one of these other ones has two connectors on it, an A and a B. So A is line pressure on that one, B is drive, boost, fuel, transmission pan, converter, so on and so forth. And if you see there, I have numbers 173, 170, and 203. 
That is actually the serial number for the EAS connector. And that's how you find out what connectors what in the software. I didn't know that when I first did it. I thought they just would be like, you know, connector one, connector two, connector three. And of course I didn't read the directions, but I figured it out. So I had to pop that back out and get the serial numbers. But for the future, I won't have to worry about it. I'll put a little picture up of the 12 volt source kit. Um, I did a little unboxing, but I think I lost the footage. Um, really nothing major. It just has the connector that that connects into and then a power and a ground and the HDMI that plugs into the CTS2. Nothing difficult. Um, only thing I thought was odd was they give you a power and a ground, but they don't tell you what size fuse to put on it um, or give you a fuse. Usually they do that, but we got a five amp on there now. So it should be fine. It's probably very minimal draw, I'm sure. And that all runs up to the CTS too. I mean, really, uh, the setup of it is very simple. The problem is just routing all your wires. That's the hard part. Like anything, you know, the wires are the biggest pain. Um, but once you figure that all out and you can run them nicely, you're good. Everything is set up and we're ready to data log. All we got to do is turn the key of the truck. And there we go, she's powering up. Now, when you first do this with the 12 volt kit, you wanna make sure you go and scroll down. I actually hit Dodge and Ram and it kept searching for sensors and stuff. And finally it was like, there's a problem. Well, I didn't realize if I scrolled down one more screen, there was an option for the 12 volts, uh, 12 volt um, startup kit. You know, it was looking for OBD2 readings. So as you can see, there's our gauges um, in the edge my style the edge my style software you can set up um, what each gauge is off of those eas connectors um boost line egt transpan so so to add them to this screen you just hit this button here select new pid and there's all our different options the only one we don't have is drive pressure see as you can see the cts2 is a tad sluggish it's nothing major but for somebody who's just like an enthusiast like us it's it's great i mean it's simple to use and all that but now we have our drive pressure and it's reading that because well there's nothing hooked up and i guess that's just the reading i mean that's all i can say but as you can see i did have the truck running a moment ago so we do have some egt temperature there our pan temperature and converter temperature are about what it is here in the garage no fuel pressure because that's off so there's the whole gauge setup. If we start the truck, make sure it's in park. We are. Set the parking brake just in case. It'll actually shut off because of how I have it wired. Um, you could really wire it to a switch if you wanted to, but didn't really think that was necessary since we have that nice fuse panel and have a key on um, power source. There's, there's all our stuff. There's all our stuff. Our EGT should raise slowly. Our fuel pressure is about where we want it to be. If we look at our line pressure here, when I put the truck in drive, shoots right up to 136 and a half, which I think is perfect. I'll contact John once we go for a test drive and make sure. Uh, everything works like I said it's um, a little sluggish getting up there I don't think that's a trans I just think that's how the CTS 2 is so yeah it's gonna do exactly what we need it to do so to record the logs on the EFI live you'll plug it in the OBD2 port um, here's the connector that's already plugged in. So we plug that in, it'll light up telling you it's intelizing. Oh, intelizing, I use a big word. So as you can see, it's starting up. We'll go to scan tool, select PIDs. You need to select the correct ECM for your truck. Really, I only have tunes on this for the race truck. I am going to get new tunes for 
Caitlin at some point, um, but it is the same ECM on both trucks currently, so I can really get rid of the clutter on there. Just go to record data. And now you know it's logging. And you can look at all your stuff, your injection, you know, whatever. All the different things that are being recorded, you can actually check out while it's recording. Um, and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see what tune you're on. Currently, it's on tune three, um, just because that's what it was on last when I was messing with it. Now with the CTS-2 to record your data log, you hit touch the bottom. Go to data logging. As you can see, the two with the red have already been recorded. So you're going to go to an empty one. You know, basically this is saying that when you go back to the home screen, the gauge screen is when it will start. So now it is started and you can tell because there's an amber light up here. If you hit that, it will tell you it is currently data logging. You know, make your pass, whatever, either shut the truck off or go back down here to the bottom. And turn it off. Now you have your data log for your runs. You can record up to five at a time. Uh, go back, save them to your laptop, you know, change the name of them so you know what it was. You know, tune one, tune two, tune three, whatever. But if you ask anybody, they're going to tell you it was on Tune 1 or Tune 2 anyway. So I don't even know why they call it a CSP5. It might as well be a CSP2. But, uh, you know, some guys don't like to divulge everything. I figure I'll show you how to set this up. Um, just a real brief synopsis of how to do it. Um, it's very simple, and you can figure it out on your own. But here we go. You plug the CTS2 in your laptop, then you open up the uh, Edge My Style software, so it will detect the CTS2. There it is, boom. All right, so you can customize the display, add pictures, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can go to customize EAS devices and data logs, which are the two we're interested in. So we go to customize EAS devices, and you, as you can see, it found all of our um, sensors off of those connectors. Um, first one, EGT, is obviously pretty simple. Um, remember I had said about the numbers on the back end there um, that I had wrote on them. So the 173, it's the last three digits. As you can see, that's our transpan temp and converter temp. This one's our boost pressure and fuel pressure. So if we look at that, basically you go in here, give it a short name, a little bit longer name for whatever reason. Um, and then the description, I guess basically this is the this is the name here, gauge name that's going to show up on the gauge on the uh, uh, seat on the monitor. I think the long name is probably in the data logs and then the description um, for when you're finding it. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, you go in here to mapping, you can select your sensor. They have, of course, their sensors and then custom voltage and custom resistance for, I guess, different types. They also have a bunch of wide bands in here for two sensors. So ours is a zero to 100 PSI pressure sensor. So half a volt to four and a half volts, zero PSI to 100 PSI G. So we'll back out of that. And then we did the same thing for a trans pan um, and converter, and you just had to find your temperature sensor. Um, that's it there. And then the one that takes a little bit of doing, and not that it's a whole lot, um, is your custom sensors. This is our line pressure and our drive pressure. Um, basically, you do all the same stuff. You just go to custom voltage, and rather than this voltage and what the gauge is um, to show, you put in. So our, we put our half a volt to four and a half volts because that's what our sensors read. And then that equates to zero and 300. And you can add different steps because some sensors will tell you at two and a half volts, it should be this just to make it a little bit more precise. So you do all that and then you can actually change what your units are on these. So that way, you know, you can make it PSI, you can make it whatever, whatever the case may be, that's what you can do. You can make it uh, rabbits if you wanted, you know, so you have a hundred rabbits, you know, you could do something goofy like that if you really wanted to. So that's that. Yes, we do not want to save. So data logs, this is what we're here for. So earlier I did a little data log. Um, basically pops up our graph 
So this has all of our different sensors that we, we just put in. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go down here to line pressure, select that. As you can see, nothing. So you scroll over. And there it is. We got a little, little jump and then whoop, up off the chart. So what you do to scale this, you go over here, just double click the the minimax over um this is actually the minimax of the sensor itself so you can read it and that'll show you your graph you can zoom it in or out so you can just see close more you know more or less time or more frames i guess it's the right way to say it so as you scroll across with your red line using this cursor you can actually read the value down here to see where you were at so it's reading like 3.1 really no line pressure and then all of a sudden we put it in drive and we're up to 36 37 we're in the ballpark we want to be and then we can see when we put the truck back in park it ramps back down so pretty simple you can change the colors um what this is really good to show is obviously we can read what our line pressure was but when we get into running the truck we can check our boost and our drive pressure to make sure that they are pretty even across the board and you know, drive pressure is not spiking through the roof at some point, meaning we are out of our um, turbo's efficiency zone. But we can also watch our fuel pressure here and just make sure that the fuel pressure stays at a constant um, whatever. And that's how you data log with the CTS too. It's not perfect, that's for sure. I would love to be able to have, you know, OBD2 stuff and our sensor stuff but that's not the case. I'm sure we can find some, some kind of adapter to adapt the rail pressure sensor to this. So that way we could see our rail pressure with our fuel pressure. But I think with you know figuring it out and probably bringing up both programs at the same time, we could probably just pinpoint where we started and what's going on. Um, it really shouldn't be that difficult. You'll probably see you know fuel pressure drops. You'll probably see rail pressure drop or something like that. But I don't think that's gonna be our issue. I think our issue would be um, we have two stock pumps, so when we get up in the higher RPMs over like 3,000, they're going to level off. Um, that's how. That's a reason like a Fleece CP3K pump comes to mind, or uh, what's Exergy? It's a Sportsman something. It's basically like a stock outlet pump, but it doesn't have that taper off at like the 3,000. Because think about it, truck in stock form is limited to about 3,000 RPM. So why would you ever need that pump to produce more pressure than that? So the big one I'm real concerned with right now is boost and drive pressure. And of course, watching the transmission stuff just to make sure that everything is, seems to be working right and that we're not up on the converter too long. And now if something happens and, you know, say we burn up another converter, hopefully not, but, and I don't think we will. But if we did, John says, well, how long were you up on it? I can pull it up and say, hey, I was only on it for 10 seconds. You know, I don't know what happened. Or whatever the case may be, we can go back and we can actually look rather than having GoPro footage that I'm trying to zoom in on and you can't really hardly make anything out. All right, guys, so I know the last couple of videos have been more of just informative than working on the truck, but I hope everybody really learned something and like i said previously the cts2 with the data logging is more for us enthusiasts rather than your hardcore racers um i mean yes i would love for this thing to be just a monster one day but it's not there yet so we have other things that that coin could be going towards right now um or in the near future that i'm not worried about this a basic setup will do us but this is perfect for the guy going sled pulling every once in a while, you know, maybe three or four times a year, goes to the track occasionally, you know, just so you can check your shit out. So definitely check it out for what it is. It's great. Um, not the best, but it's certainly better than nothing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll check you on the next one. We will definitely get be getting back to working on the truck. It's supposed to be cool this weekend. So I'm hoping we can do some, uh, outside metal activity so we can get this thing looking like a truck again so i just drew a complete blank holy crap get out in your garage get the wrenching on your truck <laughs>